This is how narcissists handle people they cannot control. In the labyrinth of narcissistic dynamics, when the astute observer reveals their game, the narcissist finds themselves in a perplexing conundrum. The facade of benevolence, the carefully crafted image of victimhood, crumbles under the discerning gaze. A pivotal juncture is reached, where the emotional puppetry loses its strings and the manipulative arsenal loses its efficacy. It's a disconnection, an unmasking that renders the observer impervious to the narcissist's traditional machinations. But it's a naive assumption that the narcissist, faced with the erosion of their emotional leverage, will gracefully exit the stage. The narrative takes a twist for the narcissist, akin to a malevolent puppeteer, seeks alternative avenues to perpetuate their control. The emotional tether severed, yet the persistent tendrils of their influence linger, now seeking new vessels to manipulate, new pawns to play in their complex chess game. In this unsettling dance, the narcissist, deprived of the once fertile ground for emotional exploitation, grapples with an uncomfortable truth. The observer is no longer a pawn susceptible to manipulation. Yet, departure is not their immediate recourse. Instead, a sinister orchestration ensues, where the narcissist, ever vengeful and spiteful, weaves a web of destruction not only for the observer, but for a myriad of interconnected victims. The aftermath is a tableau of chaos, as the narcissist, refusing to relinquish control, juggles multiple victims concurrently. A vindictive pursuit unfolds, with the list of casualties expanding as the narcissist orchestrates a symphony of deceit and malevolence. The victims, unwittingly entangled in this dark ballet, become mere collateral damage in the narcissist's insatiable quest for dominance. Thus, the observer, having severed the emotional umbilical cord, now faces a traphearted onslaught. The narcissist, recognizing the threat posed by the observer's resilience and insight, embarks on a three-pronged strategy to maintain a semblance of control. Firstly, the narcissist, like a malevolent alchemist, transmutes admiration into disdain. The observer, once held in high regard, becomes the target of a devaluation campaign. Through insidious means, be it embarrassment, gossip, or full-blown smear campaigns, the narcissist seeks to erode the observer's standing. The aim is not only to undermine, but to isolate, to tarnish the observer's reputation and orchestrate a grand spectacle of social rejection. For the narcissist, if direct control is unattainable, the next best recourse is to manipulate the perceptions of those in the observer's orbit. Relationships meticulously built are raised to the ground, collateral damage in the narcissist's relentless pursuit of retribution. The observer, fortified against direct assaults, finds themselves ensnared in a web of interpersonal upheaval. In the second act of this psychological drama, the narcissist, confronted with an observer who eludes direct manipulation, endeavors to dismantle the foundation of their support. The narcissist's machinations extend beyond the immediate observer, targeting the peripheral relationships that provide a bedrock of strength. Like a strategic saboteur, the narcissist aims to corrode the pillars of support, ensuring that the observer stands alone in a desolate landscape. But the piece de resistance lies in the third act, where the narcissist, haunted by the observer's resilience, seeks not only to devalue and isolate, but to obliterate any credibility the observer might possess. The objective is simple, to ensure that the observer's warnings fall on deaf ears. The narcissist engineers a narrative where the observer becomes a pariah, a persona non grata, rendering their words impotent in the eyes of those who might heed caution. In this intricate dance of psychological warfare, the observer, armed with insight, must navigate a labyrinth of deception and malevolence. The narcissist's playbook, designed to exploit emotions, transforms into a weapon of retaliation when faced with an observer who refuses to be ensnared. The battleground shifts from direct manipulation to a war of perception, where the observer's fortitude is tested not only against the narcissist, but against the collateral damage wrought by their vindictive machinations. In the labyrinth of narcissistic dynamics, when the astute observer reveals their game, the narcissist finds themselves in a perplexing conundrum. The facade of benevolence, the carefully crafted image of victimhood, crumbles under the discerning gaze. A pivotal juncture is reached, where the emotional puppetry loses its strings and the manipulative arsenal loses its efficacy.
It's a disconnection, an unmasking that renders the observer impervious to the narcissist's traditional machinations. But it's a naive assumption that the narcissist, faced with the erosion of their emotional leverage, will gracefully exit the stage. The narrative takes a twist for the narcissist, akin to a malevolent puppeteer, seeks alternative avenues to perpetuate their control. The emotional tether severed, yet the persistent tendrils of their influence linger, now seeking new vessels to manipulate, new pawns to play in their complex chess game. In this unsettling dance, the narcissist, deprived of the once fertile ground for emotional exploitation, grapples with an uncomfortable truth. The observer is no longer a pawn susceptible to manipulation. Yet, departure is not their immediate recourse. Instead, a sinister orchestration ensues where the narcissist, ever vengeful and spiteful, weaves a web of destruction not only for the observer but for a myriad of interconnected victims. The aftermath is a tableau of chaos as the narcissist, refusing to relinquish control, juggles multiple victims concurrently. A vindictive pursuit unfolds, with the list of casualties expanding as the narcissist orchestrates a symphony of deceit and malevolence. The victims, unwittingly entangled in this dark ballet, become mere collateral damage in the narcissist's insatiable quest for dominance. Thus, the observer, having severed the emotional umbilical cord, now faces a traphearted onslaught. The narcissist, recognizing the threat posed by the observer's resilience and insight, embarks on a three-pronged strategy to maintain a semblance of control. Firstly, the narcissist, like a malevolent alchemist, transmutes admiration into disdain. The observer, once held in high regard, becomes the target of a devaluation campaign. Through insidious means, be it embarrassment, gossip, or full-blown smear campaigns, the narcissist seeks to erode the observer's standing. The aim is not only to undermine, but to isolate, to tarnish the observer's reputation and orchestrate a grand spectacle of social rejection. For the narcissist, if direct control is unattainable, the next best recourse is to manipulate the perceptions of those in the observer's orbit. Relationships meticulously built are raised to the ground, collateral damage in the narcissist's relentless pursuit of retribution. The observer, fortified against direct assaults, finds themselves ensnared in a web of interpersonal upheaval. In the second act of this psychological drama, the narcissist, confronted with an observer who eludes direct manipulation, endeavors to dismantle the foundation of their support. The narcissist's machinations extend beyond the immediate observer, targeting the peripheral relationships that provide a bedrock of strength. Like a strategic saboteur, the narcissist aims to corrode thee. In the intricate tapestry of narcissistic interactions, the saga unfolds further when manipulation and control slip through the narcissist's fingers. When the puppet strings of dominance are severed, the narcissist, ever the contender, embarks on a relentless pursuit of one-upmanship. Unable to exert direct influence, they channel their energy into a fierce competitiveness, striving to outshine and outdo their erstwhile subject. The narcissist's modus operandi transforms into a relentless comparison game, a ceaseless evaluation of their life against the canvas of yours. Their insatiable desire to prevail prompts them to covet the grander house, the more opulent car, the alluring partner, and the loftier career. In a bid to assert dominance, the narcissist may even fabricate success, plunging into debt to maintain the illusion of a superior existence. For them, every aspect becomes a contest, a calculated effort to surpass your achievements. The narcissist's pursuit of superiority extends beyond material possessions. Even the number of offspring becomes a metric, with the narcissist striving to exceed your familial count. In their relentless quest, they feign happiness and success, crafting a facade that conceals the hollowness beneath. Competition becomes their raison d'etre, and the need to perceive themselves as superior looms large. Yet in this labyrinth of one-upmanship, there exists a paradoxical undercurrent. The narcissist, unable to manipulate or control directly, may also opt for a stark departure, a calculated distancing or outright indifference. The proximity to someone who has eluded their grasp, someone impervious to their machinations, becomes an intolerable discomfort for the narcissist. The mere presence of such an individual, who sees through their facades and refuses to dance to their manipulative tune, 
unsettles the narcissist to their core. In these instances, the narcissist, reluctant to confront the glaring reality of their diminishing influence, chooses to fade into the background. Ignoring or distancing themselves, they retreat to preserve their fragile ego. The notion of spending time with someone immune to their tactics, someone impervious to their influence, becomes anathema to the narcissist. In these moments, they seek refuge in environments where new targets await manipulation, where the risk of exposure is minimized. As the narrative unfolds, it becomes clear that control is the lifeblood of the narcissist. The inability to manipulate is perceived as a grievous loss of control, an affront to their very essence. Acceptance is not in their lexicon. Instead, the narcissist, faced with the unraveling of their influence, clings to the remnants of control with a desperate tenacity. The conclusion of this unsettling chapter unveils a stark truth. The narcissist, thwarted in their attempts to manipulate, is unlikely to gracefully accept defeat and move forward. Instead, they harbor a visceral need to leave an indelible mark, to mar the reputation of those who dared slip through their fingers. Even in departure, the narcissist remains a malevolent force, orchestrating shadowy maneuvers to undermine and destabilize what you've built. In the narcissist's world, peace is a foreign concept. Vengeance becomes their perennial companion, a card always on the table. The quest for an opportunity to wreak havoc persists. Thus, the onus lies on us to safeguard against the resurgence of their influence, to deny them the chance to inflict further damage. As we draw the curtains on today's exploration, the resounding message is clear. The narcissist's departure is not an end but a transition. The echoes of their influence linger, demanding vigilance and resilience. Share your thoughts and experiences on this complex dynamic in the comment section below. Like this video if it resonated with you, and let's continue this conversation. Wishing you all a blessed week ahead, and heartfelt thanks for your attentive listening.